Welcome to 10 Minutes With, a podcast produced in the Live by the Word studios on the campus of Mid-America Baptist Theological Seminary. I'm your host, Brad Johnson, and today our 10 minutes will be spent with Dr. Mark Dever. Dr. Dever is the pastor of Capitol Hill Baptist Church in Washington, D.C., and president of Nine Marks Ministry. He is the author of several books, including Nine Marks of a Healthy Church. Dr. Dever, welcome to the show. Thank you, Brad. Good to be with you. Well, you know, I'm just going to start with uh, some questions here and let you answer them how you feel free. Uh, The first one, I I just want to have your opinion on this. Uh, In Memphis, as in any major city, uh, there are many churches that are facing dwindling congregations, ones that uh, are getting smaller in number and whatever else. Uh, What do you understand to be the biblical model for dealing with these churches? Well, preaching the Word is what God's Spirit uses to build the church. Okay. So either they should have the Word preached well and faithfully, or they should give their assets to a church that will do that. Okay. That's a quick answer. (laughs) Well, let me ask you this. Uh, uh, I know, obviously, you're very much concerned with the local church. Um, when When we look at the local church what do you see the local church role in missions is, especially uh, global missions, international missions? Well, I'm thankful for groups that help local churches work together, like the International Mission Board and mm-hmm. the Southern Baptist Convention. But I do think fundamentally it's a local church that knows uh, a brother or sister's character. Uh-huh. It's a local church that knows whether or not they're faithful and fruitful in evangelism in other areas. So it's really a local church that fundamentally is able to assess whether or not a person uh, is good to work to evangelize cross-culturally. Right. So as much as the IMB and groups like that can try to do their research and I'm sure have expertise in particular areas, it's the local church that's worked somebody, walked with somebody over years. Right. They know what they're like. They're the group. They're the, the body that really should send people out like they sent Paul out in the sure. book of Acts. Sure, sure. What, uh, what are your views on short-term mission trips? What, what do you think about that? Yeah, I think short-term mission trips are certainly mixed, but I think they're more helpful than unhelpful. Okay. I, I think what short-term trips uh, at their best end up doing is giving people uh, a sense of what God's doing elsewhere in the world. Oh, uh, yeah. grows yeah. a heart of concern for elsewhere. When they're done right, they can be an encouragement to workers elsewhere. Now, now often they're not. Yeah. Often they're more like trips that really cost a lot of money and a lot of the time yeah. of the local people. So we, we're we in, in Washington, D.C., mm-hmm. and we have churches all the time saying they want to send their youth choir to us to do oh, something. Yeah. sure. And we we never take that. We, we don't have the time for that. Sure. So if it's really meant to be a sort of vacation mm-hmm. for 15 people from, you know, a church in Tennessee or Arkansas to right. go to the Caribbean or to go to yeah. Mexico or, you know, to go to Eastern Europe— well, that's that's one thing. But if they could do child care sure. for workers while they have a meeting. Right, if, right. If they could do things that aren't glorious, but that actually you don't have to have long-established relationships to do, then they can be incredibly useful and helpful. Yeah. And in the hearts of the people going, they can help create a real flame of interest in what the Lord's doing elsewhere and when they, when they see the need. Sure. Well, kind of following up on that question, of course, here at Mid-America, we uh, strongly emphasize uh, evangelism, personal evangelism. Um, in your view, what's the the way that a local church uh, fosters a desire for its congregation to to share the gospel? Good question. Uh, I think it begins again with the word being preached. Mm. You and I are not born innately knowing the truth. We're, right. We're made in the image of God, and we have a conscience. That's true. But we are basically sinners. So unless somebody tells us the truth about God and the truth about ourselves, we're lost. Right. So we, we need a church that's going to be clear and faithful in their preaching. Uh, I think it's helpful in your preaching to always have the gospel. Okay. And I think it's helpful to always address non-Christians so that your congregation knows, one, that non-Christians are welcome to come to church. Right, right. Two, that non-Christians know that. And three, so your congregation is getting an example again and again of how you speak to a non-Christian. Sure. So my sermons, I'll often say, if you're here today and you're not a Christian, we're delighted you're here. Thank you so much for being with us. And from whatever point I'm talking about, I'll just at, raise a question or two for them to consider. Right. And then at some point during the message, I'll try to put together the, the whole gospel for them to know how they can repent of their sins, trust in Christ, and be saved. 